In a quiet laboratory, engineers are tinkering with a deceptively simple machine, a heavy metal flywheel rigidly mounted on a sturdy frame. Yet the inventors have given it a name that hints at big ambitions, the gyroscopic inertia pulse motor generator, and claim it can produce what they call unlimited or free energy. According to them, once this wheel starts spinning, it keeps turning and even generates electricity seemingly on its own. It all sounds a bit like science fiction, but the creators say the secret lies in a clever combination of physics tricks and engineering. In this video, we'll explore how this unusual device is built, how it's supposed to work, and what kind of power it can produce. We'll break down each key element and see if this proof of concept really could one day power your home. The heart of the machine is a huge spinning flywheel, essentially a heavy disc that has been carefully designed so that most of its weight is concentrated around the outer edge. Why is that important? When mass is located far from the center, the wheel has a tremendous amount of rotational inertia. In everyday terms, once you get it spinning, it strongly resists changes to its motion. Think of a gigantic gyroscope, or the spinning wheels of a heavy bicycle. They want to keep going in the same direction, making the system very stable. In this design, the engineers deliberately made the outer rim very heavy, using stainless steel rings attached to a plastic rotor so that the wheel can store a huge amount of kinetic energy when spun. The first key point, this stored momentum is like a reservoir of energy. Once the flywheel is up to speed, it takes very little additional effort to maintain its rotation, even under load. In effect, the wheel's own inertia is doing much of the work of staying in motion. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The inventors built a generator right into the flywheel itself. Usually, if you want electricity from a spinning wheel, you put a separate generator somewhere and connect it by belts or gears. But in this machine, a compact three-phase alternator, a type of small generator that produces alternating current, is mounted inside the outer rim of the flywheel. In practical terms, as the wheel spins, it also spins the alternator attached to it. Electricity is generated without slowing the wheel more than necessary. This is a clever trick. By integrating the generator into the mass of the flywheel, the system avoids extra drag on the shaft from gears or chains. The inventors explain that even when the alternator is loaded, putting out power, it doesn't kill the flywheel's spin because it's part of the same rotating mass. The energy is tapped gently, allowing the flywheel to keep turning almost indefinitely. In short, the generator is carried along by the gyroscope itself, so the whole assembly remains extraordinarily balanced electromechanically. But the gyroscope and generator aren't the only parts. Inside the frame sits another piece, a pulse motor with coils and magnets on the same axis as the flywheel. However, here comes the really wild part. The motor and the flywheel aren't physically linked by any belt, gear, or shaft. Instead, they influence each other purely through magnetism. Imagine the setup like this. The flywheel has its own ring of magnets or magnetic elements, and the pulse motor has coils that generate magnetic fields when energized. Each time the coils are pulsed with electricity, they create a magnetic push, or pull, on the flywheel's magnets. This pushes the flywheel forward a little bit. In turn, the spinning flywheel's magnets affect the motor. Because they share the same central axis, the two parts stay aligned. But the magic is that no hard mechanical connection exists between them. They behave almost like two planets orbiting the same sun, they move in sync because of the forces between them, not because one is physically dragging the other. The engineers call this an open synchronization system. What that means is, if you slow down the motor part, the heavy flywheel tends to keep spinning 
and will actually drag the motor along by its magnetic attraction. Conversely, if the motor were sped up suddenly, the flywheel's inertia would pull it back. This mutual magnetic coupling makes the whole machine very resilient. Each side helps keep the other going. A fascinating demonstration of this effect is described by the inventors. They spin the wheel by hand to a moderate speed and then try to stop it with one quick grab. The result? The wheel doesn't simply come to a halt. Instead, it wobbles or oscillates briefly and then keeps spinning. Why? Because the motor coils are no longer actively pushing on the magnets. The pulse is off. So the motor side is free and the flywheel side is free. The magnetic coupling resynchronizes them, kind of like the system finds its own balance again. In essence, the flywheel's massive momentum keeps it spinning, even though a human tried to stop it. Likewise, the designers say the opposite is true. If you somehow could hold the flywheel stationary and spin the pulse motor, eventually the magnetic coupling would spin the flywheel. The key takeaway? The two halves act in tandem through magnetism alone, so the flywheel stores energy and the motor can keep it turning without needing a rigid mechanical link. This stability means the machine is very good at resisting changes to its speed, which is a cornerstone of how it might output continuous energy. Now, what about that pulse motor part? It's not just any motor, it's designed with a special trick. In most simple pulse motors, you have coils and magnets that push against each other in pulses. The problem is, often only one pole, say the north or the south side of a magnet, does useful work, and the other half of the magnetic field in the coil is wasted. Here, the inventors improved on that. Instead of having one set of magnets on a single rotor, they use multiple rotors with permanent magnets. In the version we're discussing, there are actually three magnet rotors stacked on the same shaft, one rotor right at the center of the device and two additional ones further out. Each of these carries magnets facing the electromagnetic coils. When the coils fire, they push on all three rotors at once. This is the third big innovation. By driving multiple magnet rotors with one set of coils, the system nearly doubles, or more, its torque and output compared to a single rotor design. Essentially, it's like having three motors working in unison. More magnets mean more interaction with the coils, which means more mechanical force and more electricity generated on the alternator side. Also, the fields from the coils that would normally go unused are now putting three sets of magnets into motion, so much of the coil's energy contributes to turning the device instead of getting wasted. The end result claimed is a big boost in efficiency and torque for no extra input cost. In very simple terms, all the coil's push is being harnessed by multiple rotors instead of just one. There's another subtle but important detail about how this pulse motor operates. Timing of the pulses. The machine uses a timing wheel with magnets, often called a timing disc, in front of sensor coils that trigger the pulses. In this design, the engineers use only three magnets on the timing disc instead of, say, six magnets. What that means is the coils fire once every 120 degrees of rotation, skipping every other possible pulse. By pulsing only half as often, the motor side of the system gets short, powerful bursts, and then free wheels for a bit. In practice, this means each rotor gets a strong shove and then coasts, adding even more rotational momentum. The skipped intervals allow the massive flywheel and extra rotors to spin freely and build up energy between pulses. This on-off punching action at about 120 hertz if run at 3,600 RPM, but only three pulses per revolution of the timing disc, is intentional. It lets the system store more kinetic energy and avoid constant magnetic drag. The inventors describe it as adding overall mass inertia, 
Basically, the entire machine spins more smoothly because it's not being continuously braked by the coils. One way to think about it, the pulse motor only fights the flywheel for part of each spin. And for the rest, it's relaxing and letting the flywheel carry its own speed. This further contributes to making the device highly efficient for its input, since the pulses are sharp and the rest of the rotation is essentially unloaded. All of these mechanical and magnetic innovations come together with a set of electronics that manage how the power flows. Inside the case, you'll find bridge rectifiers, a DC-DC converter, timing circuit, and control knobs. The three-phase AC output from the alternator mounted on the flywheel is fed through a rectifier to turn it into DC. This DC can then charge a battery bank or power a load, like household circuits. On the motor side, the coils that create the pulses also need DC, and their pulsed operation tends to generate high-voltage spikes. To handle that, the inventors added a second bridge rectifier on the motor side. It also turns that output into DC and protects the circuit from spikes. Importantly, these two bridge rectifiers are on separate circuits. Why? Because one set is for taking the generator's output and storing or using it, and the other set is for dealing with the pulse motor's side. The way they've wired it, you cannot simply take power from the generator output and feed it directly back into the motor's input circuit. In other words, it doesn't form an infinite loop that would magically run by itself. The motor still needs a separate input, for example from a battery, to keep pulsing. This design choice prevents short-circuiting the system and keeps the energy flows under control.